I love Taylor so much. And just being a part of anything like that is so special because of course there's, I mean, a million people there and that's such a cool experience to perform for that many people, but also to have that experience all together where we're singing the same song together and hearing that sung back to you is kind of like one of those moments where you're, I'm still singing, but I'm also thinking at the same time, holy like crap, how did we get here? This, this yeah. is crazy. <laughs> Hey friends, it's your girl Emily Curl and right now we're here at our iHeartRadio headquarters in New York City and we're hanging out with Sydney and Graham from Echo Smith. Can we give it up for Woo Sydney and Graham in our yeah. building? Thank you. Thank you. So much. And first off, can I just say I love the color coordinated outfits. Thank they you so much. I am very <laughs> grateful I bought this dress today oh. and I was like, I'm meeting him in the lobby and I hope that it matches and it did. And it yeah. did. Oh. Oh. And I was like basing off of a photo and I was like, we're just going to have some fun today and roll the dice. Well, we're going to have a lot of fun today because we have a lot to celebrate. You Guys. have been releasing music for over 10 years and now today your self-titled album Echo Smith is out. I can only imagine what is going through your minds right now but how does it feel having this project out into the world? It feels so special because we've been working on this album for like two plus years um so to finally see it like come to fruition and yeah. be able to share it with everyone else is so cool because when you write the song it's like a high and you're like, oh my gosh, like that felt so great. And then you make the music and that's another high. And then you send it to your best friend and see what they think. And that's another moment. But then when you get to actually share with everyone and it gets to leave, like it's not just on my phone anymore. It's the it's coolest the thing. So it's the best. And the fact that it's a self-titled album, why did you want to do that now? Why was it important to have an Echo Smith album right now? It feels like if we were ever to do it, this was the time. It was now or never because we went back and forth on a couple album title ideas, but our whole goal with this album was to be as honest as possible, put it all pen to paper and just like lay lay it all out, who we are. And yeah. that's why it felt so fitting to do self-titled because this is just who we are. And this album shows so many different sides of that from being siblings to tough family dynamics or I'm married and so is our other brother Noah. So we talk about marriage and all the facets of that. So it's it's very much who Echo Smith is, which is really yeah. a cool feeling to just to let everyone see it all. Well, we're so excited for you guys. And it's so fun because I know a lot of your fans know this, but you mentioned this, your siblings. I have three other siblings and I feel like I oh would gosh. actually kill them if I was in a band with them. So <laughs> I do not know how you guys do it. What is the working <laughs> What is the working relationship like with the three of you together? Well, we were talking about that earlier today, actually, and Graham had a good thought of like the three kind of pillars of what makes us work. What did you say it was? It's communicate. Yeah. And quality time. Yeah. And what was hanging it? out. Hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you said uh, being intentional. And being intentional. That was really good. So I that feel like, good. yeah, we've been best friends since we were kids, but there have been times where it's like it takes us being extra intentional right now because everyone's really tired or we live in all separate places and stuff like that. So it's cool where those things come into play where it's like, wait, we've been working so much. We need some of that, like, fun quality time of just being family. Yeah, so, like, incorporating those different things has been really key to actually like surviving and thriving as a family. So growing up was music was music always playing? Were you guys always singing, playing instruments, writing songs? Like what was that dynamic like? I mean we were playing pretty much everything right off the bat. I don't even know when you started playing drums. You were like two. Yeah, like hitting whatever oh, yeah. he could. It really? just it was that was like pots thing. and pans. Did you oh, have yeah, a drum set? Pans. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it started with pots and pans. I bet your parents were like, Wow, this is this is good. <laughs> like this is great. Um and our dad is a musician too, so he had like a studio and you know, was producing indie artists at the time. So we just had full reign of the house to like grab whatever instruments we wanted and we started writing songs when I was like nine, which is when we started the band. So it was like 17 years ago oh that we just like kind of decided to be a band and here we are doing it almost 20 years. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, and how cool that creative freedom too. Yeah. When you go back, what is like the first memory you have of performing as a group of the three of you guys? The first time we ever performed was kind of the day that we even started the band because somebody just needed a young band to play a benefit concert and they, like asked around at our church or something. And then our dad was like, yeah, my kids know how to play. I guess, you know, we could all just play together. And that was our very first show. And from that point we were like, I guess we should just be a band. That's cool, yeah. what should our name be? <laughs> um, so I remember that show. I mean, it was like a walk run benefit that we played at the end of and everyone's like sitting in bleachers, probably like 
what is happening? Because we were oh little. He was seven years old. Oh my! Did you did, did you oh, have yeah. a full drum set at that time? Did yeah, you bring the pots and pans on stage? <laughs> you had the drums. Like the full drum set. Yeah, you oh, had a good. real drum set by that point. He graduated. Oh good. Oh, but exciting. I mean, we were playing random covers from like Rage Against the Machine to Love Song by The Cure. I mean, it was like all over the place. <laughs> so um, then we're like, yeah, we should probably like write songs. And the first couple songs were, you know, very adolescent feeling but you know we were kids so I mean what can you expect oh my god I mean and now all this time later you guys are releasing such amazing songs Thanks. with this album and we're gonna get to some of the singles but I want to talk about the process because yeah. the process of producing and songwriting this was a first for you guys of doing it all by yourself right yeah so we we have collaborators on a few of the songs but a bulk of the songs were written by Jess Echo Smith which is a first for us and it was really cool because the first song we released for the album or you know part of the album family was hang around mm -hmm. and that really like set the tone in so many ways because that song was written by just echo smith which was wow. you know quite a feat um and also yeah noah our other brother who's unfortunately not feeling well today but um him and our other brother jamie co-produced pretty much everything together which is so fun so we have like the whole fam in the studio wow. wait so was there four of you guys total yeah oh i thought there was only three. Oh, yeah four. so he okay. had he had a kid about set jago seven years old yeah, seven. so yeah once his wife got pregnant he you know decided to do producing and writing and artist wow, stuff on his own but i love so. that he's still a part of it That's yeah so cool. it was a really cool like coming back together moment because we've always stayed close but it was really cool to bring it all back in the studio together and just like have laugh attacks and then try to get stuff done and get distracted making dinner and you know my nephew's walking in I mean Aww. there's a lot of fun dynamics that I even have on video where I was just like recording a video of me writing a piano line for something and then my nephew's like can I have a chip you know because I always bring <laughs> snacks so it's just like a fun dynamic that we just get to have fun and create just for the sake of creating, which is so cool. What do your parents think of this new album? I can only imagine how <laughs> excited they are about it. They are, and they've always been super supportive, which is so cool. We've toured with our parents a million times, and you know, I love getting to just get their feedback on stuff. Like, hey, what do you think? Like, do you love it? Because um, you always want your parents to be proud of you, you know. Yeah. So it's really cool to have them just so supportive this whole time and we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for them in the beginning of being like hey you can do this and then do your homework like they were very supportive of the whole music thing which is very rare very rare like. that's so cool yeah. it's so cool to hear yeah and I think having a support system like in my husband's the same way where he's so sweet and he's I don't know great at just believing in me even when I don't mm -hmm. for myself and our parents did that too long the way when things were tough or it just felt confusing. We weren't sure what step we wanted to take next. Um, having people who are just cheering you on and telling you that this is possible for you is the best it makes thing. all the difference. Yeah. And let's talk about, I mean, you mentioned your marriage. Let's talk about Sour, the single, because this was a personal story for you. And yeah. you also said that this was maybe your favorite Echo Smith song ever, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know I saw it on Instagram. Yeah, I Tell mean. Tell the story behind Sour. Sour is so, so close to my heart. And we all love every song. That's how we choose the album is yeah, we're, like, course. on the same page of what we all love. But that song is very much, like, my little baby. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that was written in a really hard season of just trying to push through being long distance with my husband as he lived all the way in Florida and I was in California for and six months. And you moved back to, oh, that's right. Okay, so you moved back to Florida. Yeah. Okay. So um, my husband's a pilot and he was flying out there and we were both going back and forth, stealing moment to, together and just trying to, like, be together as much as we could, but a lot of things just wouldn't allow for it. Um, so right at my breaking point <laughs> where I was like, that's it. I'm going to move to Florida or something like something's got to change because this is too hard. Um, that's when I was just venting to our brother Noah on the phone. And then we just tuned our guitars to the same open tuning, which is always fun to write in. And on speakerphone, we wrote the song then and there and did it in a couple hours. And then we were like, wait, this song feels special. And we don't need more songs, but let's go produce it. And sure enough, it's my favorite. Wow. What yeah. do you think of this song, Graham? Oh, it's such a great one. It's a banger. It's <laughs> it is a banger. <laughs> It is a banger, which is funny because it's actually yeah. like a really it's... sad song. Right. Yeah, it is. But I think that's something that Echo Smith likes to do, where it's like you can have these like really deep, meaningful lyrics, but we could also be like singing it together at a concert and having fun. You know? Right. Like a sad, happy song. A sad, yeah. yeah, happy and sad at the same time. Uh, exactly. Yep, yep, we feel that. What did your husband think of the song? 
He loved the song, and he's, like, the first person I want to show songs to when I write something. So you're like, I have this idea. Yeah, Don't I'm get like, mad at me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, so this is about you. And he's like, it always is. <laughs> Your muse. I got to love that. You got to love that. I That's love great. it. I mean, he's a perfect, like, source of inspiration. But, yeah, um, yeah he really loved it, and it was kind of cool to just – I think I played it for him on the phone because we weren't together. So I was like, oh, hey, I want to show you this song. Like, are you listening? And making sure, like, because I can't see his face. Um, and I showed it to him just playing it on guitar and he loved it and then it evolved into this banger as Graham would say it is a banger um and that's the fun part about production like a song can take a whole new life in that way and then you can play it acoustically like we've done here at iHeart you know and it totally sounds different but that's how we wrote it so it's kind of cool to see both like I I mentioned before the audience didn't get to hear this but I got to hear a few of the other unreleased tracks before the album was out yeah the album is so good and one thing I was blown away by was the production of it thanks so I'm curious for you guys how many iterations did you go through like you said to get that Mm. right sound to get the right vibe to make that happy and sad mix I mean every song is different so there sometimes are songs where it's like okay, the first draft is actually really close to what it ends up being. Um, And then there are times where you are really just throwing things against the wall and seeing what feels right, and then you, like, mute everything and then rebuild it again. Mm. Um, So it was cool to do that as a family, sitting in the studio, just, like, making parts together, too, because that's the fun part about producing your own music is you get to, you know, I'm writing a guitar line over here, and Noah's coming up with something on the bass, like, in a different corner. So we're just kind of, like, all collaborating, which is really cool. Um, but I think Hang Around was the first song that really determined the sound and the direction Mm -hmm. that we wanted to go musically, um, which really helps because once you have a frame of reference, you can just make the rest and see what happens. Yeah, that's interesting that that was the one that really Mm -hmm. spoke to you guys. Yeah, and I don't even know what it was, if there was something in the air. I don't know. I mean, you just just, knew. You were like, That day, we were like, wait, this is really cool. And we listened, like I listened in my car afterwards, which I always love to do when you write a song. Because then you can really tell if it's, like, good instead of other people with you. Like, yeah. by yourself in the car, then you, know. you hear it. Yeah. And I was like, wait, this is actually really fun. So then we kind of just went from there and wrote the rest of the album over the course yeah. of a couple months. Okay, let's popcorn. What is your favorite song, Graham, on the album? Oh, Perfect Light. Oh, I didn't know you were going to say that. I Uh-oh. like that answer. Why do you say that one? Oh, the drums on it is so cool. Yeah. Okay, so that was, yeah. Okay, It has, like, a nice feel to it like it kind of makes you move when you listen oh, to yeah. it that's a good choice that is, yeah um, that's actually one of my favorites too and my husband actually helped us write oh, that one really? which is so, oh, so fun. he's a collaborative like a collaborative yeah. artist too yeah i'm like you're my inspiration i mean he <laughs> he's the best <laughs> I'm check. i love it i know um can i tell you my other favorite this is just like yes. my first listen oh is my i love prima donna oh my gosh thanks i really love prima donna that was Thank i love the lyrics i love the production of it i thought that was like such a cool moment thanks i feel like that one totally like has its own place on the album, which is really cool because it's not super busy. It's actually a pretty simple song, um, but it just has such a fun, like, I don't know, I feel like a little, somebody on our team said, like, I feel like a fairy dancing around the room yeah. to the song, and I'm like, that's that's the vibe. That's the vibe. Um, and that one's just, like, so fun. I'm excited to play that song live. I think that'll be a really fun, like, groovy song with our fans. I was going to oh, ask yes. you guys, are there, are there plans to go on tour? Do we have shows in the mix? Yes, we actually have a European tour coming up, um, and we're also going abroad for some shows with the military, too, to play on base. Um, So we're doing a lot, actually, overseas right now, which has been great because we haven't been back in way too long. I don't even know how many years. Um, So we really wanted to take some time to be overseas with the people who haven't seen us in way too long um, since we just wrapped a headline run only a couple months ago here in the U.S. So we're definitely looking to plan some more shows and lots of fun things just around release and you know now that the album is out in the world I mean there's a lot of songs to play so we're excited to even if it's like fun little pop-up things until we do a full tour we're going to be, we'll be around and we'll be, be playing around. this okay, music for a lot, a lot of people. Of there we go. <laughs> we'll be and, back. Oh, by the way, I had to ask you guys, one of your fan favorites, Cool Kids, that yes. absolutely took over the internet, took over TikTok. What's it like for you for you guys to get to see your song almost have a second life like that? Yeah, it definitely feels like it had a whole new life. And I think we're also in a totally different place than we were when we first wrote it and mm. when it was bubbling up the first time. So it's cool to feel that new experience as the artist too because I think we're all constantly growing and to see other people grow with your music is a really special moment so I was really grateful that people were still relating to it because I am gonna play this song till the day I die and like I still when I sing it I'm like 
I still feel that way in like maybe different ways than I did when I was 15 yeah. when we wrote it, but I still very much relate to that song. So I think it was really comforting to know I wasn't the only one who still like felt that, even though we've had some growth since. Um, so that's why making Cool Kids Our Version was so special because I was yeah. like, I feel like there is a little bit more to say because a lot has happened in the past 10 years. I can't believe that song was written when you were 15. It's yes. crazy. <laughs> it also made me I think, either, too, honestly. is I'm a huge Swifty. I just saw Taylor Swift, and I was thinking yeah, about you performing her. Cool Kids on the 1989 tour, yeah. which, what was that experience like for you? I mean, that was so cool. I love Taylor so much. And just being a part of anything like that is so special because, of course, there's, I mean, a million people there, and that's such a cool experience to perform for that many people, but also to have that experience all together where we're, singing the same song together and hearing that sung back to you is kind of like one of those moments where you're I'm still singing but I'm also thinking at the same time holy like crap how did we get here this, this yeah. is crazy oh. um and she's just like the sweetest human being so it just was like a combo effect um and really sweet and we did it again I don't even know somewhere in Ohio at some oh, point too amazing. so it's just fun she's like hey are you cool with like pyro I'm like sure I don't know what that means but okay absolutely I was like, oh yeah up. there is fire <laughs> So fun. So, Hello. yeah, it's such an honor and just oh, that's so, so fun. Cool. Yeah. And then, Grant, for you, what's it like playing a show? Like, what's your favorite part of being on stage? Ooh, hearing the crowd sing. Yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah. Of all of the Echo Smith songs, what's your favorite to play live? Mm. Lost Somebody. Oh, my gosh. Oh. That, one's, that one's from our second album, Lonely Generation, and that one is so, it's fast. Like, Ooh, it's Ooh, okay, super, so you're really you're getting the crowd going. It's really fun. Like, I am out of breath like really out of breath by the end because I'm like running around playing tambourine and we're jamming together. I mean, it's a whole experience and people usually are like jumping and all the things. Oh, so that's so fun. So okay, fun. what would you say? Top of your, like top of the head. What's um, your... I mean, honestly, playing Bright is so fun because it's usually just like a stripped, you know, moment in the set where I'm just playing guitar and they're playing their things. But it's like a really simple moment that we get to like, live in with our fans which is so sweet yeah. so getting to hear them sing that back and in such an intimate setting is cool because no matter how big the show is or you know all the production things we get to have that moment where it's just like it feels like it's just me and the crowd hanging out right here in a living room you know that's so special well, we are so excited for you guys so excited for Thanks. all the live music can we give it up one more time for echo smith and our this is great their new album echo smith is out now so make sure you listen to it on iHeartRadio, and we will see you guys next time bye Thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here and don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. See you next time.